Welcome to the Activated Storytellers 59th podcast, August 30th, 2007. This week's story is The Little Red Hen, an English folktale. Hi, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr, and I'm back. And we are the Activated Storytellers. This week we are situated in Situate, Massachusetts. Just for the time being. We just did laundry here. Right. Nice laundromat, I have to say. It looks right out into the bay. I, I like it because you can see the the ships parked right out there. It's kind of a neat atmosphere. Nice little town. Do ships park? Well, the boats. They're out there. I was going to say, uh, boats don't park either. Boats dock. There's a difference. Okay. The boats are docked right out there. If your ship parks, that means you're in a parking lot, which means your ship is grounded. And unless you have a duck, that doesn't really work. But I thought computers docked. Does that make computers grounded? I don't know. Where are we going with this? I have no idea. Out to sea. Ah, we need a sea story now. Uh, Zephyr is back with us. He just came back from Not Back to School Camp, and I think he'd like to update us a little bit on what happened at Not Back to School Camp. Well, it would be a shorter story to say what didn't happen at Not Back to School Camp, so what do you want to know first? Oh, you're going to make me work for this, huh? Well, just tell us a little bit about your trip, some of the highlights. Let's see. Uh, I flew out from uh, HSC. You guys probably heard about that on our last podcast. HSC being the homeschoolers conference we were participating in last week in Sacramento, California. Right. I flew out from HSC with some friends of mine, uh, Amelia and Wolfram, and uh, we flew up to Portland where Amelia lives, and we stayed at her house over the night, and then we went uh, to Not Back to School Camp. So what is the what is the purpose of Not Back to School Camp? What is it really all about? Not Back to School Camp is a camp for homeschoolers and unschoolers ages 13 to 18. Sometimes they uh, let 19-year-olds in, but uh, it's a whole unschool community, and it's it's pretty loosely structured compared to a lot of other camps. Um, the only things that are really mandatory are, you know, check-in and morning meetings and that kind of thing. Um, but th- there's a lot of workshops going on. A lot of the unschoolers get together and, and teach each other. You know, there's slots throughout the day where... You can go teach workshops. In fact, I taught a workshop on parkour, which is a hobby of mine, and like half the camp showed up for it, which was a little surprising. But um, and then they have you know all these activities uh, at night. Sometimes they'll do large group activities. Like they had, they even have a prom, for instance, which is uh, you know where everybody will come and, and dress up, and um, and then they'll just play music and whatnot. So it's kind of it's kind of like well, while everybody else is going back to school, we're doing our little not back to school camp. Well, I dyed my hair. Oh, that's right. And the story this week is the little red hen, and I think I know why we chose that story. Zephyr now has a little bit of red hair. I do have a little bit of red hair. I've got a couple of of red, not not really bright kind of red, but more sort of orangish streaks going on. And I have to say I was a little nervous about it, but it looks quite good. So is that all you did at camp? No. uh, No, there was a lot of stuff I did at camp. Uh, I emceed a couple of the talent shows with a group of other, of other people. We actually, myself and two other kids, formed our own little group, which we called M Plus C, which is, of course, MC. So we hosted the, the second talent show like that. I hosted the first one by myself, and I did a different impersonation for every act that I brought up. Uh, but then we decided to do M Plus C for the next one, and we hosted it all together, as a, and we, we'd make up things as the acts were going on and then come out and introduce the next act with whatever we'd made up. Gee, so you got to do some acting, something you don't normally do. How exciting i got to do some improv acting, something I don't normally do, assuming everything goes well. That's true. And uh, while Zephyr was gone, Dennis and I had a little trip. That's right. We went to see Martha on her vineyard. We took the ferry over to Martha's Vineyard, which is an island about 20 miles off the coast of Cape Cod. And we took our bikes over. We packed them up with some camping gear, left the RV over on this side of the, um, what is that, the bay, the water, the ocean, the the big pond. I don't know. The the Atlantic Ocean. Well, on this side of the, I guess they call it a bay. Anyway, we did not put the RV on the ferry. We took our bikes over, loaded up with camping gear, and spent the night at a campground over on the island and spent two days biking the entire, well, not the entire island, but a good portion of it. Yes, to, it would have it would have cost about eighty dollars to uh, to take the RV and trailer across on the ferry each way. So we did not do that. And even just camping out there um, without an RV is $46 a night, which is a little crazy for just a, a tent and on bicycles. and ugh. But this is kind of a trial run for further biking adventures, we hope. Biking and staying in a tent at night. And we had a good time doing it. 
And we have another one planned for this week. This week, uh, all three of us are going to be biking out to Provincetown. Which is on Cape Cod. Uh, Martha's Vineyard, it surprised me because I was expecting it to be, you know, you hear about it being the vacation home of uh, rich people, which it is. But there also appeared to be a lot of people living there who were not so rich. And there was even farmland. It, it was There was more rural area there than I expected. And pretty good bike paths. Um, what I was expecting was fewer cars. Not the case. Plenty of cars, lots of traffic. Yes, way too much traffic. And there are a lot of little towns on uh, Martha's Vineyard, ranging from population to from 300 to about six or 7,000. Uh, one of these towns we bike to is called Oak Bluffs, uh, which is it's right on the beach. And uh, we went to a really nice Mexican restaurant there. And just across the street from the restaurant is the oldest continuously operating carousel in the country. It was built in 1876. It's called the Flying Horses Carousel. It may even be the oldest carousel in the country. We're not sure. Yeah, so lots of neat things to see out on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, of course, beaches and um, fun places to go to. Well, this week we have a story for you, and in honor of Zephyr's red hair, it is The Little Red Hen. Once upon a time, there was a little red hen, whose feathers were the color of henna, and she had five chicks. Now, one fine day, she was out pecking around the farmyard, and she found a little grain of wheat. Oh, why, look at this little grain of wheat. Oh, who will help me plant it? Not I, said the goose. Eh, not I, said the duck. Bah, not I, said the lamb. All right, then. I'll just plant it myself. So she planted it herself, and before long, the wheat came up. And when it was ready to harvest, the little red hen asked, oh, Now then, who will help me harvest this golden wheat? Not I, the goose honked. Not I, the duck quacked. Bah, I like cake. I mean, not I, the lamb bleated. Well then, I guess I'll just have to harvest it myself. And you know what? That's what she did. After the wheat had been harvested and plucked and picked, the little red hen needed to thresh it. So she asked, Who will help me thresh this wheat? Not I, the goose honked. Not I, the duck quacked. Bah, cookies are fun. I mean, not I, the lamb bleated. Well, well, no. I'll just go thresh it myself. And you know what? That's what she did. Well, by and by, after it was all threshed and the little red hen needed to grind it, she then asked her barnyard friends, uh, who will help me carry this grain to the stone mill? Not I, the goose declared. Not I, the duck posited. Bah, what's a posit? I mean, not I, the lamb expostulated. Well, in that case, I'll just pick it up and carry it there myself. And would you believe it? That's just what she did. Well, now, after it was ground into flour, the little red hen needed to make it into a loaf of bread. Um, excuse me, but who will help me make this fine flour into a loaf of the freshest bread? Not I, the goose honked. Not I, the duck quacked. Bah, not I, the lamb bleated. Oh, very well then. I guess I'll just bake a loaf of bread myself. So she baked a loaf of bread herself. And when she was finished, she took it and carried it over to the table, and it was meal time. so she asked... Now, um, who will come and help me eat this hot, fresh bread? Oh, oh, I will. I'll do it, honked the goose. Oh, I'm sure there'll be extra for me, so will I, quacked the duck. Bah, me too, the lamb bleated. Oh, no, you won't. Not one of you. For who planted the seed? Who harvested and threshed the wheat? Who carried it to the stone mill to have it ground into flour? And who baked the tasty loaf you are now so hungrily eyeing? Well, you did, if you want to get technical, I suppose. Admitted the goose. I suppose you did. Acknowledged the duck. Bah, you did. The lamb said rather sheepishly. That's right. I did, and I will share it with none other than my chicks. And that's what she did. 
And that's the story of the Little Red Hen. Well, we hope you enjoyed this week's story. You can find some more information about our shows and touring productions at our website, activated-storytellers.com. Show notes can be found at libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. And right now we are booking shows for the fall in uh, the Northeast. So if you've got a school program that's interested in perhaps having this come and activate some stories, um, the show information is also on our website. And actually we're booking for the entire school year right now, booking Northeast in um, the fall, down South in the winter, I don't know why we head south in the winter, but there's a good reason for that. And then we'll be working our way across the country come February and early March and doing the West Coast shows out that way in um, the spring and on to Hawaii in May. Aloha, oi, aloha, oi. So a little ways off for that, but we are booking shows right now for programs across the country, schools, libraries, theaters, anybody, give us a call. We'll see what we can work out for you. And uh, we are going to be biking from Brewster to Provincetown on Cape Cod. So we're looking forward to that. We'll bring you a story next week from Cape Cod. Thanks for joining us. The Activated Storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use American Sign Language, physical comedy, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life. For booking information, check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com, where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you, read a story, or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time. <laughs>